Hi, I'm retiring my microwave gun. Now in this video I would like to do a reverse engineering of the microwave gun that I already have and have an in-depth explanation of not only how it works but also how to make it, which is something that I didn't do very well in the video when I actually made it. Maybe I should start with why I'm getting rid of it. Well, first of all, I'm moving, don't have space for the thing anymore, and if that's not a good enough reason, it's also technically in violation of FCC standards pursuant to Section 301 of the Communication Act of 1934 as amended, which forbids the use of an unlicensed 2000 watt transmitter. Well, I realized that my first video did not do a really good job of explaining the theory behind a microwave gun, nor exactly how I put it together, and uh, that's something I want to redeem myself in in this video. And also, I want to clear up a couple of misconceptions that people have about microwaves and microwave guns, specifically what they can and can't do. Alright, so here's what the inside of a microwave looks like. Here we see the magnetron, which emits waves into the main cavity. That's this part over here. Oh, and it's cooled by this fan. Whee! Down here we have a 2000 volt transformer and a 2000 volt capacitor. And it's because of these that you never work on a microwave while it's plugged in. Your main concern is the high voltage. An excess of 2000 volts is used to power a microwave gun, or even a microwave oven, which will kill you right away, so don't go anywhere near it while it's powered. Deal? Secondly, be aware that it emits a high power, low frequency wave. That is, after all, kind of the point. Which isn't dangerous if you limit your exposure, it's not like it's going to give you cancer or anything, but the last thing that you want is to cook your eyeballs or your... manhood. Safety-wise, I would recommend, at a minimum, using some high-voltage rubber gloves. Did I forget to mention that this is a gun? So don't go around shooting a bunch of stuff with it. Okay, let's shoot some stuff with it. Typically, a fluorescent light bulb works because high voltage will eject electrons from the mercury vapor inside the tube, and when the electrons come back to the mercury, it emits UV light, the energy that it gained. And that UV light isn't visible to us, but it'll interact with the phosphor that'll emit visible light. Microwave radiation should work to much the same effect. You may have noticed that I'm doing this in a stairwell. That's because I don't want to damage any of the electronics in the lab. Microwaves are pretty harmful for sensitive electronics because they can induce a bunch of random voltages inside of them, which will cause them to fail right away, but they'll usually go right back to normal as soon as the microwave source is shut off. But they do not, however, explode. That's right, I'm looking at you, Krayosan, in your fake video. Electronics don't blow up when you microwave them, and I would know because I microwaved okay, my transistor right. radio, uh, yeah, which I was using to demonstrate interference. It didn't blow up. In fact, it went right back to working normally the moment I shut off the microwave source. I wouldn't be surprised if the microwave gun they had really was exciting the fluorescent and incandescent bulbs. But then they fell victim to one simple trap, and that's that explosions make great videos. A common experiment that people do is taking a fluorescent light bulb and putting it in a microwave. Now let's see what an incandescent bulb does in a microwave. Oh, it lights up well. Unlike a fluorescent light, it won't glow in the visible spectrum. However, the noble gases inside of it will cause a plasma to flow between the filament and the outside glass.
Hmm. Yay! Don't touch that stuff right when it comes out of the microwave, especially if it's just been plasma a moment ago. All right, enough ranting. Let me show you how this works. Now, essentially what this is, is a 2000 watt microwave oven, only it's directed forward. Now, you can't get 2000 watts just from any power outlet in your house. So what I had to do is use two separate power outlets, each on a different fuse. Unless I felt like bypassing the fuses altogether, but don't do that, that'd be dangerous. I made it symmetrical across a 2x4 piece of wood. On each side there's a high voltage transformer, by high voltage I mean in excess of 2000 volts, a high voltage capacitor, and of course a microwave magnetron. This is where the radiation is actually emitted inside of a microwave oven. And I should also not forget to mention that everything is grounded together using a ground plane just like this on each side. This entire circuit that a microwave oven uses to operate is a voltage doubler. So what it will do is it will take the input, 60 hertz AC, 120 volts, or 240 depending on where you live, and it will use a transformer to step it up to about 2000 give or take. And then the voltage doubler circuit, which consists of a capacitor and a diode, which is that diode down there. Very high voltage diode. Not a lot of current though. That will be used to uh, create a voltage peak of about 4,000 volts. And this is minimum for a magnetron to create electromagnetic radiation around 2.4 gigahertz, usually into a microwave oven cavity, but here it's into a horn that both directs it forward and amplifies it. Also inside the horn I put aluminum tape. Um, that's down here actually. Here we go. Aluminum tape on the inside to um, prevent any uh, waves from getting stuck in crevices or more importantly to make all of these edges flush with the um, with the waveguides and the horn. To make a horn I found it best to trace trapezoidal cutouts onto a sheet of metal and then fold it up into a rectangular horn. The dimensions for a waveguide can't just be anything that we want, they need to be pretty specific to get waves to propagate through it. There's actually a lot of mathematics that goes into designing a waveguide. Here's a good rule of thumb to keep in mind though. The frequency of the wave that you're using is proportional to the speed of light divided by 2 times the height of the waveguide. And if this equation looks familiar, it should. We know that the frequency of any wave is equal to the speed of light divided by lambda, its wavelength. So essentially all this means right here is that the waveguide's height needs to be half of the wavelength. Using this equation we can solve for what the wavelength of microwave radiation is. We know that microwave radiation is around 2.4 gigahertz, so if we take the speed of light and do the algebra we find it to be about 12 centimeters in wavelength. Which is kind of big for a wave, but that's expected since it's low frequency. If that's the case, that means that we're going to want the height of our waveguide to be half of that, around 6 centimeters. Let's see how a microwave oven compares. Alright, let's go ahead and start taking this apart. I want to get at these waveguides from the microwave back here. I need to take off the horn first. I suppose this could make a nice, I don't know, uh, lamp shade or something. Now that we have this waveguide off of our microwave gun, let's do a calculation and see what this distance is right here. This is supposed to be covered up, so that's irrelevant to the actual function of the waveguide. I have here a caliper, which is zeroed. Let's go ahead and do a measurement. Six point one three centimeters. That is just about spot on with the calculation that we did earlier. I should probably mention be very, 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 very careful when you're working with magnetrons. These uh, bands here, this pink and white one, 
Now, one of them is a band of beryllium oxide, which is extremely dangerous. If it's broken, you get particulates in your mouth or your lungs, you could develop a condition called beryllosis, which is incurable and will eventually kill you. So just, just avoid them. In my last video, when I was talking about how magnetrons operate, I mentioned that a magnetron's antenna emits waves in a pattern that looks something like this. These lobes are where you can expect the microwave radiation to have interaction with its surroundings. So what we don't want is for a waveguide to come straight off like this. It'll have uh, very little effect on the magnetron. What would work a lot better is if the waveguide looked something like this so that the lobes coming off the magnetron could be emitted down the waveguide instead of being interfered. And of course they would also go to the left too and they would reflect somewhat back to the right. And, but this is dangerous because you could potentially have these out of phase with one another. So maybe that's not the best idea. What you can do instead is just eliminate this wave altogether so you don't get constructive nor destructive interference by making a triangular pattern like this. That way when a wave comes into it, it's a little bit absorbed, some's reflected, a little bit absorbed, some's reflected, absorbed, reflected, absorbed, reflected, and then it's gone. And then we don't need to worry about this anymore. What microwave ovens do is they have a similar-ish design, which looks like this, and then they direct it forward after that. They have a 45 degree angle here to deflect it, and then it goes up, and in here is the cavity of a microwave oven. And the waves will do something like that. Let's actually take a look inside this microwave over here and see what its waveguide looks like. Ugh, it's grody in here. And it smells like burnt light bulbs too. So uh, we can see the magnetron antenna sitting right here inside the microwave. And the waves come down, they bounce off here, and into the microwave cavity. Once we have our waves coming out of the waveguide directionally, here's where we're going to want to add our horn so that we can amplify it into a greater amplitude wave. There we go, everything's been reduced now to a pile of junk. Well, I don't normally do my videos in reverse, I don't really know what to say now. I suppose there's one more interesting thing I could share about microwave guns. The first time I made it and I was using it for some experiments, I got to thinking if it could be used effectively as an anti-drone weapon. Turns out it kind of can. If the drone gets close, within say 10 feet of a microwave gun, it'll lose control of its systems and plummet back to Earth, but it's not as effective as I was hoping for. I was kind of hoping that the interference from the microwave gun would prevent the signal from the controller from communicating with it, but that wasn't the case. But still, it was pretty cool to knock a drone out of the sky with a microwave gun. Also, it may have been illegal. So, uh, let's just keep this between us, okay? As always, I'd like to remind you to stay safe and have fun. And of course, as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>